What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another late night in the Brew Lab with me, Lone Fox, your Brewmaster in Chief. And tonight in the Brew Lab, I'm uh, coming at you with a Nexus. Nexus of Fate? Is it called Nexus of Fate? It's uh, one of the new Big Skull cards. It's another crazy, overpowered artifact uh, that, when put in conjunction with um, Smuggler's Surprise and. Uh, what's the little raccoon called? The little two-mana raccoon guy that's also an adventure card. I can never remember its name. But uh, we have like uh, at least three or four four ways in this deck. Maybe even five once we get... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump into the brew shortly. Um, that uh, give you the ability to just put ridiculously expensive and overpowered uh, creatures with crazy ETB triggers... Uh, onto the battlefield every single turn for free and it's just so damn fun uh, i'm currently sitting on like 10 and 2 with the deck so actually even on top of it really good win rates for once i'm like really shredding uh, it's been a good few days maybe like three four videos now where i, I just cannot get a win in sideways uh you know some very hard fought wins um, and, and it definitely um, confirms my opinion about the meta in general uh, when it comes to um, the power level and what it is that you need to do to, to win. And um, I think we're at a point right now where if you can just pull off the jankier, crazier, overpowered combo before the other person, then you're, you're, you have a, a, a higher probability of winning um, instead of just playing a, like a fair plan of oh tap some lands play a couple creatures no what we want to do is put like an atraxa and an itali on the battlefield on turn four and freaking destroy the opponent before they can even uh pull off their thing which is very much the case in a lot of these like older formats where you get access to all of the crazy cards that have ever been printed um the fact that we're in a situation like that with standard is just pretty crazy to me but uh, regardless, the second thing that we're here to do is to test this damn mic setup. The last two videos were absolutely terrible. I think I finally uh, nailed it. It has a lot to do with this noise gate because I have a very noisy house. I don't live in a studio <laughs> or anything. It's all thin wooden, uh, you know, things. If I'm just tapping on my table, my fans are blowing, my kids are shouting, my dogs are barking. I'm, I'm trying to eliminate all of that background noise, but the problem is I was putting the effect too severe on the filters in OBS, and uh, that was leading to my voice cutting out entirely when I wasn't reaching a certain decibel range, and um, the uh, gate, this noise gate filter, wasn't uh, reopening the gate quickly enough so then you we had these moments when my voice would just completely disappear and then when i tried to make that effect less severe then we had like the most recent video it's kind of very boomy echoey all of the little me tapping on my keyboard and my uh, and a lot of this is going to get resolved once i move into my new house and i'm going to have uh you know a cement uh, not just wood and um i'll be able to buy a little boom i want to buy a boom mic thing so that the microphone isn't like right now it's on my desk right in front of me so i have to just be a little bit more um vigilant not to tap around and get fidgety as i often do try not to kick my desk and things when i'm recording and just focus on uh keeping my hands uh you know on my keyboard and on my mouse that level of audio has all been cut away but i think if we all listen here and i go like a little drumming like that on the keyboard on, on, on my desk will definitely be heard. So I'm trying my best to not just set up the mic properly, but also behave in a way uh, in where, you know, which will lend itself to a higher quality of um, audio in my videos. Thank you for your patience. And now, without further ado, let's jump into tonight's brew. And I've just called it Nexus. Nexus. But um, the card is actually called... And it's not Nexus. Nexus of Becoming. Beg your pardon. It's a new one. I'm still getting my head around it. But Nexus of Becoming is the main reason why we're playing this deck. And I do have to give some credit where credit is due. Um, I think it's MTG Creative Combos. 
I, I saw this online somewhere and it, it my list is completely different from theirs for many reasons but it's close um, because it's still just making use of Nexus of Becoming and trying to get as many of the most broken things that you can put on the board here on the top end uh, but uh, I've, I've made some different choices and I think it makes my version a little bit better so Nexus of Becoming six mana which incidentally is the exact same uh, mana threshold that we need to arrive at uh, to fire off the most basic mode on Smuggler's Surprise, the four uh, plus one green plus the, the one green needed to cast the card in the first place. And then you can put two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. So it's six mana. Six mana is where we need to get to as quickly as possible for this deck to pop off. And um, I am using various ways to do that my favorite uh is definitely the bramble familiar which is unique to my version of the list and uh, just because it's a uh, turn two mana dork that can tap for a man of any color but then the nice thing is that later in the game we can also use the uh, fetch quest mode here to do more broken things so that's what i was saying earlier in the introduction we have the uh fetch quest mode on bramble familiar we have smuggler's surprise we have Nexus of Becoming, we have, uh, you know, Itali, uh, when it ETBs, brings stuff. We have Galta, that when it enters the battlefield, can put any number of creatures. Boom, boom, boom. We also have Gishath's attack, uh, you know, or combat damage trigger that will also allow you to uh, put those cards onto the battlefield. And then, of course, Portal to Phyrexia, which I'm really thinking, I'm, I'm trying my best to find a way to add an additional copy, because... We'll get to reading Nexus of Becoming and why it is that I want that. Um, but obviously a fantastic card and it'll then help us to, after a sweep or after whatever, like to, to still keep doing the broken stuff, which this deck is trying its best to do. So Nexus of Becoming, what does it do? At the beginning of combat, so this is a beginning of combat, which is great. You draw a card, which is also great because it's it, the shell is green as you can see from the mana base and whatnot and there's not much card draw going on so this beginning of combat card draw is fantastic and then when you when we, i'm just going on a little tangent about advantage and how we're drawing cards you've got of course the itali getting us a card both from our side and the opponents bolt born tyrant any creature with power four greater entering the battlefield will draw us a card and gain life so like that happens a lot in this deck clearly uh, of course a trux as etb will get you more <laughs> more cards in hand um and uh the last one was gonna be no that's it but when you put all of that together uh it actually ends up being pretty nice amount of we don't run out of cards is what i'm trying to say so then uh you draw a card the next thing is you exile an artifact that was my point about the portal to Phyrexia. It can either be an artifact or creature card from your hand. If you do, you create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 3-3 golem artifact creature in addition to its other types. So the main thing we're going for here is the... Actually, you know what? I've gone with three Atraxes. Let's go with three Atalis. Add the extra portal. Done. So that also gives us a bit of a, like a sweeper action and also stealing things from the opponent's graveyard. Love it. Um... The main thing we're trying to do here, because of course you'd rather have your Atraxas, your Atalis, whatever, still be 7-7s, seven not 3-3s. Three so the, the main one I'm, I'm trying to find and discard and get into my hand and, and start doing broken things with is Galta. Because even if it's a 3-3, three three, then when it enters the battlefield, you put all the other stuff from your hand onto the battlefield. And those things will enter uh, normally not as 3-3s. Three uh, but, you know, in a pinch, whatever, who cares? I mean, uh, <laughs> the only one that really suffers uh, drastically from that um, reduction in, in its uh, power and toughness is Gishath because it it cares about uh, how much damage was dealt. So even if the opponent's got an empty board and you swing in with your hasty Galt, uh, Gishath, um, but it's a 3-3 three -three now, you're not going to get to look at many cards from the top of your library uh, but all the other ones don't really suffer too much from this problem um, and, and that's just one way of cheating in to play these broken cards the other ones we've already mentioned uh, so you know i think it's pretty clear what we're trying to do here uh gold vine hydra is just an additional little you know it can be a late game top deck fireball to the opponent's face with the haste 
<laughs> but also, you know, sort of mid-game, you're not finding your stuff and you're missing land drops for whatever reason. And you can just throw what mana you do have into making this as big as you can and hope that the opponent considers it a big enough threat to kill it, at which point, or, you know, you can just block or attack into something big, you know, force the opponent to, to get rid of it in some way. And then uh, you get all those additional treasures and that should definitely get you to the six that we need to start doing all of the busted stuff. Um, of course, we've talked about the Bramble Familiar as a way of ramping. I'm thinking of a way to maybe put a third one in here. The lands are already quite, I mean, we've got 23 um so i don't know i can't cut another land but i wouldn't mind putting three brambles in here then we've got the iron crag which is also quite nice it, it can like go on to some of our creatures as an equipment sometimes but really it's just for the the ramp and then my favorite uh and one that no one else is playing because uh what's it called the other one glimpse glimpse yeah glimpse the core uh, this is the one I've been seeing in most lists, and I don't like playing modal cards uh, where you never pick one of the modes ever. Like, we don't have caves. This is for the cave deck, right? You can also find a basic forest. Cool. This uh, uh, is just a little too narrow. I pref And yes, it's a two-mana play instead of a three-mana play. But because we have Bramble and Iron Crag, and again, that's a another reason why I want to go up to a third Bramble is because uh, you know on turn two we're going to be trying to, to do one of these things so it doesn't matter and, and anyway you can't on turn three nexus no matter how much ramping you're doing so a turn three um ramp in a, my rotation proof variant of this deck because i've seen other people playing you know uh the titan of industry i i want my decks to be rotation proof as much as possible going forward um it isn't that far away honestly and so, um, uh, I haven't put the Topiary Stomper in the 3-mana slot, which is, of course, another way to ramp. But I really like Return from the Wilds, which no one is playing. And um, it allows you to choose both modes, and or, or two out of three, and none of them are bad. Uh, and it's not just, a, you know, this can go in other decks, uh, which I've been trying to build, um, even like Gul Gruul, Golgari, whatever because it's any basic land. Puts onto Battlefield Tap, then Shuffle, and then the other two options are great. Make a little 1-1 one, one human creature, just you need a chump blocker while you get to six mana. Great, here's your little 1-1. One, one. You need a food token to gain three life off of? Great, you choose. I'm, I'm most often picking um, mode one and two. At point in the game where, uh, you know, it's turn three in the current meta, I probably would rather have a little human lying about to block something mono red is coming at me with than a food token uh which i'll need to then spend more mana on later you know what i'm saying but but a really cool little ramp card that no one's playing and uh i like the fact that you can choose two uh it, i think it just fits better especially if you're trying to be um you know efficient and curving out and all of that because then that means if you've uh got one of your like mana dorky things on two that's already three mana available on two. On three, you play this one. You pl play a basic land. From the so you, you on three, you play your land. You cast this card, and you put a, uh, another basic onto the battlefield. Now we've got five, and then the next turn you can just do your thing. But turn four is when we're trying our best to get to the six mana. It doesn't always happen. It can be turn five. Regardless, it's still really broken and the win rates will back me up, I promise. The nice thing here is we're running these like um, uh, surveil lands to go and have a look at the top of our library. I love the crystal grotto and it's nice because like they can also help us just play our stuff. Um, like if you consider the uh, oh no, this only taps for green. Beg your pardon. But these both have a mode in which you can pay a little extra and then tap for any color. But then I've sometimes just hard cast the tally uh, without needing to cheat it in. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, and that's it. That's the deck. I think uh, that's enough of me talking. It's about time for us to jump into some games and see how the deck holds up on the upper mythic ladder. Top 1000, baby. Let's go. Last night was so fun with this deck. I promise you, I had so much freaking fun last night.
Like, uh, I love it when stuff like this happens. I just saw a, li a list I, I thought was cool online, copied it, made my, my modifications so that it feels my own and, and definitely more unique uh, in that I have now seen a few other content creators bounced around with my, my own Discord community, looked at what other people are doing with the Nexus and like, okay, this is what I want to do with Nexus. It feels my own. And then you take it on the ladder and you just go like, I went eight and one. No, I went eight and oh, and now I'm 10 and two, I think. Just shredding. Uh, and that always feels so damn good and makes me happy. <laughs> so fingers crossed. You know, it often is the case where uh, then as soon as I jump on the camera, <laughs> you go oh and five. But somehow I don't think that that's going to be the case with this brew. It's quite ridiculous. The type of turns you can take. And, um, yeah, I really like the addition of the portal there. Cheating in a portal, sweep the board, start getting back the opponent stuff. Hell yeah. Okay, I mean, this is great. Got the, the Hydra. As a turn three, if we don't draw um, the uh, Rampy card. And we've got two nice things to put on the board with the surprise. Atraxa is a particularly good one because it also refills you. Let's go scrying right away. Yes, more forests. Thank you. Kind of mono green aggro. Bring it on. Take two probably here. A sharp eyed rookie. Now we're gonna cast our Hydra for excess two and block aggressively, and that will be it. That'll just do it. Uh, I could have swung there, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it doesn't really matter which one we block. Opponent's just going for the straight up, like, modified green nonsense. Pretty sweet. But we are now officially cooking with gas. We have four, five, six mana. And we can just pass the turn. And, uh, <laughs> surprise Atraxa in your face. Let's go. This is going to be so sick. Ah, and a tracks are all, almost always finds a nexus uh, or something. No. Bye. <laughs> oh, last night I was like one. Wow, the, the ladder's crazy. I mean, like, how do people stay in the top 100? You just play all day, every day. I, 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 last night, like, 12 hours ago, I was on 1,100. And all I did was not play for 12 hours. And I've dropped, like, 400 points or something. But whatever. Whatever. I really hope that this is the sweet spot with the mic. I don't want to fiddle anymore with it. Just need to be more aware of not banging around on my keyboard and stuff. And we should be really good with this setting. At least until, like I said, I move into the new house. It's cool because it's I'm building the house, like from the ground up. I'm I designed the with the architect, of course, the drawings, everything. So it's it's exactly what I want. I have a little mezzanine in my bedroom. A stair, one of those folding stairs that folds against the wall. Uh, it's kind of going to be like my little drawbridge, you know. If I don't want the kids or the wife or anyone to bother me, I just crawl up into my little man cave, pull up the, pull up the staircase, and bye bye <laughs> Up there is going to be... Erebor. Can't keep it. Got a Nexus this time. Duh. I think we may need to keep the Hydra. Because I haven't got any ram spells, but I'm gonna suck if uh, we don't draw another portal. I'm, I'm definitely not gonna put that in the, in the graveyard.
He's no bat. No bat, no Liliana. That's fine. the same uh, route as last time right? now kind of no matter what you'll kill it I'll block Nexus is coming down we're gonna pick Galta and Galta is gonna put an Itali and a trucks on the board on turn I think it's just B -b broken ah oh. Something suspicious. Um, you won't be outsmarting me. Um, 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 okay, never mind. Or what? Hmm. Yeah, I wanna. I'd rather. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, sorry, Galta. Um, I think probably because of Liliana here, I'm gonna have to go for what, a portal. A bad idea. Although it's gonna be a golem and that can be killed, so no, we're gonna go for a Tali, as then we might snag something from the opponent. Yeah, now with the plus, if there is a plus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just uh, put the smuggler's surprise away. <laughs> we all have things we love. I'm I'm such a uh, a Liliana hater, man. This card just really makes me crazy. Please don't make me discard my portal too. Okay, fine. Ruby and Dandy. Woo -hoo! Hello. Draw. Let's go. Oh. Let's go. Uh, quick line. Do not touch me again. Just in case he wants me to discard again, then uh, I'll have my um. Oops. <laughs> They're copies. They're not. Tokens. I mean, there are. There are. Uh, it's it's one of those things. You, it's the same reason why, uh, like the Skitter Beam Battalion copies trigger the synthesizer, even though they're zero mana, like most tokens are, because it's a. Uh, I like I need this the 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 correct explanation. Somebody who's better like rule oriented than me will will be able to give you the specific uh you know rules text but this is still a, a seven mana thing even though it's a token right and so path of peril bye bye off you go <clears throat> one of black giving us a little bit of a run for our money there with freaking liliana but fortunately quite a few hasty things in the deck as well there's ruby um, and then for those turns when you're worried about the sweeper against control and that, uh, you know, like Azorius, freaking Sunfall, etc. You wait. You're better off. Because most of the stuff doesn't have haste. And you, ooh, you do your crazy Nexus. Ooh, your Atraxa, Liliana, brr, uh, Atali. Everything's on the board. And then opponent untaps and just whoosh, sweeper. Like, ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's better to then have Smuggler's Surprise. 
do it at the opponent's end step so that this all that crazy stuff happens and then you can untap and attack i hope that's clear you go first we've got the the return we've got the iron crag it's a little slower than the other hands but we've got the nexus so that's cool and i've been playing against surreal a few times already the last couple days it's uh rakdos rakdos bird Come on, bro. Like, you've literally been playing the same deck for the last, like, week. Every time I come across you on the ladder, you're playing the exact same. I don't know how people do that. It's just so boring. So, let's go... Boop, boop. Three, four. Two more mana. We can use the, um... The first mode on Smuggler's Surprise to get there. Cool, this doesn't trigger the infantry. Close face, huh? I would too. Oh! Okay, that's another nice way of getting to the six we need. One. So this is gonna be a 3-3. Three, three. What's up, Surreal? Thank you. Just what I needed. <laughs> I wonder, um, do we, like, portal this dude? Depends, I guess, what we get off of the um, Nexus. That just resolved my issues. What are you gonna do about Boltborn Tyrant? I kind of really wanted to hit this one against the uh, aggro, like the, the life gain. I mean, I've milled myself with too many of these. Okay. I think I won't do it. Get myself another little trigger there. Thank you. Stick. I think I'm a little bit in love with how broken this is, like, even though, yeah, I can be all, like, cheeky about, oh, uh, I even made a post about it yesterday, uh, what was it? Magic, the way Richard Garfield had intended, you know, just ridiculous board state that I posted yesterday, it was like, what are we doing here, like, like, I just, like, one Gishath enters the board off of a Nexus, and then it's just, Ah, Metalis, Atroxes, look at 12 cards, things entering for free from the opponent, from you. It's just like, wow, like one game, like action led to this board state. Ah, what are we doing? <laughs> 2024 magic, man. Crazy days. But also, I guess, pretty fun, you know. And and like, there, there will come a time, fortunately, just post-rotation when it, that just feel, it'll feel a little, a little less ridiculous. Ooh, any flash. This reminds me, I haven't played with any flash. I kind of really want to. Hmm. I think I saw. Saw Hello Good Game. One up yesterday with any flash. I just immediately think of like Naya humans. Sand people. Oh, better. Another land is exactly what we need. That's already it. Three, four, five, six. Another Nexus? Go. Don't mind if I do. Person beside the you. Person beside the you. Imagine it's again Liliana. I would not be surprised. Ah! Okay. Pretty cool, man. Think again. Get a little blocker. Why not? Five. 
Need one more land. We're we're doing broken things. Land off the top. Let's go, baby. Or I guess no, we can't do that. I don't know why I had that thought. So obviously wrong. I will not even repeat what I thought. Tezia, the opulent oligarch. Oh, yeah, no, terribly opulent. Okay, again, the Hydra coming in to save the day. Investigate each but only lost life this time. Let me clue controls me again. There she blows. Enough with the mysteries. How bored are we of this freaking phase will come out? I just can't anymore. One of your friends has to leave. So dull. Oh. Okay. So that will be a pretty easy way to quickly deal with this damn King Planeswalker once and for all. Imagine he has like artifact hate, instant speed. I don't think there's much. Draw. Oh. <gasps> Ooh. Okay, it's gonna have to be Yalta. Oh, this is gonna be glorious. Decline. Boom, boom, boom. Go. Yeah, douchebags, buddy. I don't think I'll ever get sick of this thing. Like, what's Gishath gonna find now? A bajillion freaking more crazy things. And they go straight onto the battlefield. I mean, he's gonna probably hit us with a sweep. If he's got the mana for it, etc. If Fine. it isn't... I'll take my zombies and leave. <laughs> it isn't uh, an exile one. Then, uh... Yeah, bye. <laughs> One four twenty. One four twenty. Sick. <laughs> get, get a little screenshot of that quickly. <laughs> oh baby, just come on, man! Like, what is what is going on? <laughs> and and like, I'm honestly quite impressed with the consistency because then like, you inevitably like the, the Voltborn Tyrant or a Traxa or a Tali will find you. You know, smuggler surprise or bramble familiar, or which will then help you to find them. It just keeps going. The, uh, honestly, the biggest problem I've had is milling myself because of the tyrant. But what I was going to say before is we still had three treasures here available where we can use the um, just the final mode here. It's two total mana for to give everything here except for this little three three. Uh, anything with power four greater, hexproof and indestructible. So if it wasn't sunfall, but like a deep pop or something, sorry. Look, look look at that look at that opponent was just trying to do like fair normal honest magic Ooh, i picked the cool card and i'm gonna try my best to make it pop off started to do a few little cool tricks and bam just dead just dead ah, i love it how are we doing for time 33 minutes in guys you know what i i do have to love you and leave you which is a pity because this is a really really fun deck uh, I, I'm gonna keep playing it off camera now um, for a few minutes before I have to go and uh, you know do my my real work duties. Um, I've already closed the restaurant, but I still have to do counting and whatnot. So again, without boring you to death with my personal life uh, details, I'm gonna love you and leave you, and uh, we're gonna jump into the deck with some final thoughts. And in this one, we're actually gonna freaking have some stats here because. <laughs> it's actually really, Get really, ready. uh, oop, pardon, um, for once, the stats are actually really, really, nice to go, and here we go, 12 for 3, that already picked up the most final match, it's been 4 and 0 on camera, I went 5 and 2 last night with version 2, this guy, 
I can't remember what happened. Oh, I timed out. Like something, something happened. Like uh, it just froze, and then I don't know. I was, I was winning. Uh, I don't know why it's not showing the rank information. I guess it's because I timed out. But again, five and two, and then a three and one run. But the most important one, of course, up here: twelve for three, eighty percent on the draw, on the play. Jeff's freaking kiss. Absolutely loving it. Gonna make this visible for you guys to go copy and enjoy. Of course, as you know, as always. All of the stuff can be found all over the place in the video description. There's about five different ways in which you guys can go copy this deck and enjoy it um, to your heart's content. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay footage and uh, my, um, you know, explanation of how everything works. And um, did please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, commenting down below, and most importantly, sharing it around for all your friends uh, to see. That really, really helps me out, and I would much appreciate it. That is going to be it for this one. Thank you all again. I'll see you all in the next one. Another fresh, fresh brew. And until then, this is Lone Fox from the Brew Lab signing out. Peace, y'all.